while doing some YouTube research uh, about calculators for uh, the uh, video, the earlier videos, I uh, ran across this one by a uh, YouTuber named Professor Herning, H-E-R-N-I-N-G, uh, -E uh, comparing an old calculator, the HP 35, to a slide rule. And it invoked some memories that I'll tell you about at the end. But the, uh, among other things, it led me to his YouTube page. And on his page are a bunch of videos about slide rules. You can see them here. They go on and on and on. In fact, I think he has uh, 57 or so slide rule videos. So <laughs> that, that caused me to... Uh, uh, nostalgia swept over me and uh, I decided to uh, revisit my slide rule collection. A little overview of slide rules. And I gave it the subtitle, Middle Ages to the Moon. And the reason is that slide rules were the way that engineers calculated things for hundreds of years. And finally, in the 1970s, uh, electronic calculators began to be small enough and cheap enough, although they still weren't very cheap, that they began to make inroads into slide rules and by the late 70s had pretty much displaced slide rules in engineering uh, it is certainly in education and even in the uh, engineering labs. So I thought it might be interesting just to kind of look at the history of slide rules and how far back they go. They actually, at least the basis, logarithms go back to 1614. And in 1620, Edmund Gunter was using a log scale, that is a, a scale laid out logarithmically, uh, and a pair of calipers to do some computation. Later, William Gunter, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm, I'm a little ahead of myself, the, uh, uh, I'm mixing these two names up, William Outred, and by the way, there's a very good website and a whole society called the Outred Society on slide rules. I won't go into that here. But he basically invented the first slide rule. In 1675, Isaac Newton used them to uh, a rudimentary cubic scale. Today we would call that the K scale. To solve cubic equations. And then John Warner uh, developed both square and cube scales. Today we would call those the A, B, and the K scale. The inventor of Roget's, or Roget's, depending on how you pronounce it, the Saurus, also invented the log-log scales that we may or may not talk about. Uh, then, in 1859, Amadee Mannheim, a German artillery officer who was working for Napoleon, invented a slide rule for use in artillery computations that has been called the Mannheim, and I realize I misspelled Mannheim the second time. It should be this way. But one of the most famous slide rules in the world was the picket slide rule. It was a pocket slide rule, and that's why I call it the pocket picket to the moon, because Neil Armstrong carried a slide rule, not just for nostalgia purposes, but actually to do computations. They did what were called delta V computations, which means co computing how long to burn a rocket to change the velocity of the space uh, probe, the, the moon mission, so that it would uh, make course corrections. And the he actually used the uh, picket slide rule to, to double check those calculations. So, I mentioned earlier the Mannheim slide rule, and these first two slide rules here are essentially Mannheim slide rules. They consist of, let me zoom in a little better on the ends of these. an A scale, a B scale, a CI scale, 
and then a C and D scale and a K scale. Now we're going to talk about these in a little bit. If, if I haven't bored you by now, uh, this is another Mannheim slide rule and notice in this case it's the same scales the uh, but they are arranged a little differently. In this case the K scale is at the top then the A, B, C, I and then C and D. Finally at the bottom I mentioned Neil Armstrong this is the type of slide rule that's a picket that Neil Armstrong took to the moon. Now the one he used was not a, a 25 centimeter, they call it, some people call these 10 inch slide rules. Uh, they're really just 25 centimeters. But anyway, this is the type of slide rule that he took, although he used the pocket version. So obviously this is not the slide rule that Neil Armstrong took to the moon, but one similar to it. Okay, now what I would like to do is talk a little bit about the scales on a slide rule and then invite people to comment whether this is something they might want to hear more about. I have a, a middle in size collection of slide rules of different types over the years and different makes. So here is some thoughts that I have had over the years about collecting slide rules. You can you can collect them according to chronology, either the early period, the immediate pre-war period, in other words the 30s. Uh, there was very little development of slide rules for the civilian market during the war, but after the war a lot of the military development of slide rules uh, broke out on the civilian scene, and so there was a lot of post-war development. And then what many people call end of era, when the uh, slide rules finally went out completely, which would be the late 60s through the 70s. The makers that I have collected over the years include K&E, uh, Keffel and Esser, uh, Post, which is actually a slide rule made by Hemi in Japan, and there also I have some Hemi slide rules as well. Pickett I mentioned earlier, that's the make of the slide rule that Neil Armstrong carried, and then Dietzen, and Dietzen is actually my favorite because for reasons that I, I may uh, talk about at the end. There are different types of slide rules. I mentioned the Mannheim. There also is a what's called a simplex slide rule, which means that it only has one side. Uh, the Mannheim is a type of simplex. Then there is the duplex slide rule, which actually has scales on both sides and a cursor on both sides. There is a specialty group called Log Log that we may not talk about. It's a little a little specialized, only engineers are very uh, generally interested in log log slide rules. There also are specialty slide rules like uh, slide rules for chemistry, for engineering in general, including mechanical engineering, as well as electronics. I have a, a few, particularly of the electronics specialty slide rules, so perhaps sometime in a future video I may talk about those. But before we uh, end all of this, let me uh, take one quick look at the scales on a slide rule. Slide rules are based on logarithms and you may be familiar with logarithms from other uh, math courses or you may have plotted something on a logarithmic scale. A lot of times frequency response plots and other things are done on a logarithmic scale. At the top is a linear scale and the uh, you notice that each division is the same to the limits of my drafting ability uh, and starts at zero on the left and goes to one on the right. Well, as I pointed out earlier in the chronology of slide rules, when Napier discovered logarithms and Gunter later put them on a, on a piece of wood, uh, they're laid out like this second scale with one on the left, and the reason is one is the, the log of zero, and in this case the numbers that I'm going to be using are what are called the common logarithms, that is logarithms to the base 10, but it really doesn't matter because any way you lay out a, a slide rule, as long as you use a consistent base, uh, it uh, the scales can work any way you want. But if you'll notice at two is the number just a little above 3. In fact, the, the actual number is 0.301. And 
These are now read as the logarithm of the number below. This is on a slide rule is called a D scale. What I want to emphasize is that when you do multiplication on a slide rule, what you're doing is adding logarithms, uh, adding lengths equal to logarithms, which means it's the same as adding exponents. So for example, if you take the length of 2 and you add the length of 2 again, you'll come to 4. If you take the length of 3 and you add the length of 2 to the length of 3, you'll come to 5, and so on. In other words, it's the product. While 2 plus 2 is 4, 2 times 2 is also 4. But 3 times 2 is not 5, but 3 times 2 is 6. So if you add 2 and then add the distance for 3, which is this length, to 2, you'll see you come out to 6. That's the basis of uh, slide rules. Now, every, almost all the other scales on a slide rule are derived from that simple scale. For example, the A scale, which is basically the square and square root scale, is just the D scale shrunk down to half its length and repeated. So in other words, if you look on 4 on the A scale, you see 2 on the D scale, which is the square root of 4. Now, on most slide rules, they will have an A scale and then a repeat of the A scale called the B scale. They'll also have a D scale and a repeat of the D scale called the C scale. And therefore, that forms sort of the basic slide rule, A, B, C, D. Most slide rules also have an L scale, a logarithm scale. But some rules have what's called an inverted C scale, which is just the same as the D scale, except it's on the slide with the other with the C scale. But it reads from right to left instead of from left to right, but it's otherwise exactly the same scale. Finally, many rules have a K scale, and a K scale is simply the D scale repeated here at one third its length, then another one-third length D scale, and finally a third one-third length. So what you wind up here is with the cubes. So for example, the cube of uh, 2 is 8. <clears throat> Last, some enterprising souls figured out that you can actually put trigonometric scales on a slide rule as well. This, for example, is a tangent scale, and it's matched to the C scale, which remember the C scale is just the same as the D scale up above, except uh, it's on the slide. So the, the T, what you're doing is you're setting up angles, and the numeric tangent of that angle is read off of the C scale. So for example, if you set the uh, the cursor to uh, an angle on the T scale, you read the tangent of that angle on the C scale. You may notice it goes from a fairly low number, this is actually a, a, around 7 degrees, up to 45 degrees. But there also are S and T scales as well. So, I said I was going to try to close this with a little bit of nostalgia. I first came to slide rules in the 1960s when I noticed a sign on the, uh, actually in the 1950s, the very late 1950s, when I noticed a sign on the bulletin board that the math teacher was looking for people who wanted to be in, on a slide rule uh, competition. I volunteered. I was the only freshman, 
who showed up, got a lot of dirty stares. Uh, but by a, a few months later, because it was a no credit course, everybody else had dropped out. I wound up the only one in the uh, in the slide on the slide rule team. Managed to to get a third place finish at a local meet, but we couldn't advance because you needed two people. At any rate, it's a long story. But the point is, that's when I first started uh, becoming interested in slide rules. Interest in slide rules led me to a little bit of an interest in math, and. Uh, a few degrees later, my PhD dissertation was, though I intended it to be an engineering dissertation, actually received an award uh, for the best mathematics dissertation of that year. But the <laughs> never never intended to do that. But then I never really intended to get a PhD either. So uh, that's the way it is. So the slide rule led man from the Middle Ages to the moon. It led me from not liking math at all and not being very good at it to even today, I don't like it that much, but I'm a little better at it. So I hope that this has inspired you maybe to, to get a slide rule if you don't have one. Maybe check out Professor Herning's uh, website uh, or YouTube channel. It has a lot of great videos. If you already have a slide rule, get it out, clean it up. Take a look at it, see if you can remember how to use it. I think that a slide rule offers a wealth of insight into mathematics that I won't get into here. But I have tutored uh, students from middle school all the way through graduate school and college. And what I find is that people who grew up with slide rules understand exponents and proportions, logarithms and things like that a lot better than people who grew up with calculators. So uh, here endeth the lesson for the day. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope you'll look forward to some more videos. Comment if you have an area that you might like to see something in. Doesn't have to be slide rules, it can be some other area, and I certainly will consider it. In the meantime, have a nice day.